You're watching The Isaiah Factor, Uncensored. And welcome back to the second half of The Factor, Uncensored. So some are saying if you're not a part of the black community, you need to understand you can be very sensitive or individuals in the community can be very sensitive about their traditions. It's a big reason why so many people are upset over these wedding photos of an interracial couple you're looking at there. A lot of people online are saying the color of the bride's skin isn't the problem. They're just, they have an issue with her jumping the broom with her new husband. That's jumping the broom, a longtime tradition in black American weddings. Before you cast your final judgment, however, you should probably make sure you know the full story behind jumping the broom. It may surprise you where it's not exclusively black. So Todd, first, give us a little history on jumping the broom and where that came from. Well, jumping the broom for our community, for the African-American community started uh, in the 1800s when African-Americans as slaves couldn't legally get married. So jumping the broom symbolized their union, you know, jumping into singlehood, into marriage and stuff like that. But history shows of doc, Dr. Steve, uh, Tyler Parry from UNLV says that tradition actually started in the 1700s in Europe when other marginalized people, certain Irish communities, certain Welsh communities would jump the broom as well because their union was an honor in Europe. So they took that tradition, according to him, to America and passed it on to African-American slaves. Um, so it's not necessarily an African-American tradition started with us, but it's something that we've adopted, we've taken seriously. So a lot of people look at it as, like it's making a mockery of our history and our traditions. And if I don't have a problem with people adopting other cultures, I love learning from other cultures and adopting them to my culture, but as long as you're not making a mockery of it, I don't have a problem with it. So if this couple wants to do that, technically as an interracial couple, they fit that marginalized category. Their union might not have been recognized before Loving versus Virginia. So technically, if you want to go all the way back to the beginning, they have just as much right to jump the broom as two African-Americans. So Shanita, what we have is a bunch of damn people who don't know what they're talking about or lacking their history in order to address this. But your thoughts on this? I, you know, like Todd, I don't have a problem with it. I think the bottom line is that we all need to research and determine uh, factual information, what factual information is. You know, my research shows that it dates back to, you know, West Africa, which is now known as Ghana, back to the 1600s, but then Wales or Europe in the 1700s. The bottom line is whatever you do as a newlywed or preparing for your marriage, do it decently and in order and with good taste. I think the problem and the breakdown comes in when people don't do things in good taste no. and we take on these things and we want to take ownership of them but we don't even understand the history behind what jumping the broom really is you know our culture african americans have also taken the broom and and wiped it over our heads yep. you know for new beginnings <laughs> and you know putting the past behind us but why are you really jumping the broom because someone else did it, you need to determine why you're doing that. That's a good point. And you said in good taste, Shanita. There's a second video that you guys have seen. Would you call that one good taste? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. What is that about? What is that about? Karen, you had a chance to see that video. Would you feel comfortable if you had a black fiance and you guys decided to get married and you put him on a leash like that? That is not appropriate. I mean, definitely not a sign of, uh, definitely not done in good taste. And the symbolism of it all is just so tasteless. Um, and social media will take that and run with it. You can bet on that. You mm -hmm. know, social media will just, will they, it gives people a platform and they're going to have an opinion about it. And then they're going to, you know, uh, run with it. And that's what's happening now. It's just jumping the broom tradition and, and the groom that was on the on the leash. Uh, social media just is a place where everyone's coming to express their opinions. And that's exactly what we're seeing happening now with everyone just giving their commentary, but it's definitely done in poor taste. Right? And Karen, should there be exclusivity to any particular 
racial or ethnic group for any type of practice when it comes to a wedding? You know, I think just being respectful of cultures and then like uh, Shanita was saying, having that discussion with the groom, like, you know, there, it's almost like, when you have a marketing meeting, you know, who's in those rooms making these decisions? <laughs> right, exactly. Of things of what not to do, because it, it is just, if you think it's going to be borderline uh, insulting or offensive or disrespectful to any culture, it's probably best if you don't do it. And I'll be damned if you come to my wedding and you make my wedding go viral because we did something, you know, in, in, in poor taste that I didn't know about. So I think I think maybe sometimes they don't really know the level of disrespect or the level of impact that it's going to have. Because, I mean, they're just doing it. And the song that they're dancing to is, uh, you know, I think it's like a Snoop Dogg song. And so they're, it's kind of themed that way. Or, um, no, what's the song? Is Atomic like, Dog. You know, oh, yeah. Oh, that song, that song, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's all, it looks like it was all planned. And it was this planned disaster to me. Absolutely. Well, we want to thank you all for joining us here on The Factor Uncensored, and hopefully someone will get the information that you guys disseminated tonight and use it instead of just running into an argument and not knowing what the hell they're talking about. Thank you guys for joining us here on The Factor Uncensored. So how cool is it to have your own money in high school with your own hustle? I remember selling noun laters, buying it from the store, and doubling the price to my classmates. Hey, everybody's got to have a hustle.